QuickBooks Online 2023. Progress invoicing example number two, recording cost of goods sold and revenue for month number four and invoice customer for month number five. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remembering we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switching the view down below, duplicating some tabs to put our reports in, right click in the tab to do so, duplicate. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate. Back to the tab to the middle, Go into the reports on the left hand side. We're going to open the balance sheet report and then tap to the right reports on the left hand side. This time the profit and loss report. Closing the hamburger, changing the range 010125 to 06325. And let's see this on a month by month side by side. Running it. There we have it. Let's go back to the tab to the middle. Close up the hand boogie, change the range 010125 to 06325. And let's see this by classes, give it a classy look to it. Run it, there we have Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Have it back to the tab on the left. We're gonna go down to the projects. We're currently working on project number two, closing up the ham boogie. Let's recap what we have done in our Excel worksheet, which is a little bit more transparent. We have uh, sent out a, a estimate. We did the estimate and then we have been billing the client. We've been billing the client based on the billing schedule that we agreed upon even though we don't know exactly what's going to happen on the work side of things and then we've been doing the work over here and actually giving getting our cost of goods sold calculations as they happen and then we've been using this calculation for a percentage of completion type of method to calculate the revenue so we can record the revenue based on the percentage of completion concept rather than based on our billing uh, cycle that we're going to have for the clients. Let's go ahead and un, un green that one. All right. So now we're moving on to month number four and we're going to say that we're going to do another, have our actual expenses, the material labor overhead that we are expending this month. I'm just going to do the same thing, making up basically some numbers here for our expenses. Let's say we have 10, let's say, let's say 11,000 this time. So it's a little bit different. 11,000, 3,000 for the labor, 201 for the overhead. I'm going to sum that up, sum it up. That comes out to the 14201. And then we're going to use that to figure basically what we should recognize based on our percent completion. But first, let's just record this. So I'm going to say, all right, let's record that and record it over here. So I'm going to say, all right. That means we're on, we're on number 415 now. Cost of goods sold is gonna be going up by the total of our material labor and overhead 14201. And the other side, we're just gonna say we're paying with it, paying for it, <laughs> and that's gonna go to the checking account. Let's record this out. I'm gonna go to my cost of goods sold in V9 F2 plus F2. We'll pick up that 14201 and then go on up to the checking account. Checking account F2 plus F2. And we'll pick up that 14201 on the negative side. Puts us back in balance here. 
and now we've recorded our costs. We have not yet recorded the revenue. Therefore, on the net income, we have a loss at this point in time. Let's do that, that same thing over here in, uh, in QuickBooks. So if I go to QuickBooks, when, when these actual expenses happen, I'm in project two, I'm gonna enter and expense. I'm just gonna record all of them in one lump sum. Obviously they would probably be happening, you know, throughout the month and so on. But this is gonna happen on 415. That looks good. I'm gonna use the items to record these because that allows us to pull them over to the billable item side rather easily. And I'm gonna say that we have uh, materials, that's description over here, materials, which we said was, did I say 10,000 again? What did I say over here? What did I say? I said 11,000 to switch things up, I remember. I remember now. Now we're also gonna make it billable. Now the billable items we marked up 30%. And when I make it billable, I'm gonna pull it into an invoice, but not so that I can give that invoice to a client so that we can record the revenue based on our percentage method here. So in other words, my markup over here was 30%. So if this is my total cost, I can take for this month, I can take this cost divided by my total revenue and that would be the and, and i'm gonna format paint this down home tab format paint that would be our percent that we would of the revenue we should recognize using this concept so i'm gonna say all right then then i'm gonna take the one hundred thousand of revenue hold on a second that's not quite right let me do that again <laughs> This is going to be this 14201 divided by not the revenue that we're going to have, but the total cost that we then marked up to get to the 100,000. And that's the number we need. All right, now I can take the 100,000 revenue times that 18.461, so on. That gives us our revenue that we would like to uh, expend. So I can or need to record. Now we can do that over here on our invoice on a line by line item, marking them all up to the 30%. We should get to the same number. I'm gonna say this is job number two. Then we're gonna have labor, labor. And it was for, how much was it for? Uh, 3,000 on the labor, 3,000 billable, 30% on the markup, class number two. And then we had the overhead, overhead, overhead. Uh, that was at 201, 201. And there it is, class number two. And then if I pull out the trusty calculator here, trusty calculator, boom, always saves the day. So we're going to say this is 14,300 plus 3,900 plus 261.3. And that should tie out to then our revenue, 18,461, that we're going to bill from. And we'll record that uh, after this one. So let's do that. So I'm going to record this. This is going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to go to the cost of goods sold for the 14,201 driven by these items. And these items then will be pulling into the invoice that we'll use to record the revenue side of things. Save it and close it and let's see it. Tab it to the right. Just show us what's going on. Quit the blabbing. Quit, quit the, you talk too much. You talk too much. What do you just like hearing your own voice? Okay, okay, here, here we go. So this, this decreased the checking account. Checking account goes down and then the other side's going to the cost to the to the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold and there it is for april so we haven't recorded the revenue yet we've just recorded the cost uh the cost of goods sold if i go back on over here and i do that same thing with like a, a journal entry we would say okay on i'm going to do it as a 430 on this end, I should have, uh, and, and so the, I'm gonna think of revenue first, cause that's the first thing that comes to mind, even though it's a credit to me. So I'm gonna say the negative of the revenue, which is gonna be that 18,461. And then the other side 
is going to go to the work in progress work in progress boom so that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do now which is easy to do with a journal entry but in quickbooks we, we're going to want to do it with a with an invoice form which makes it a little bit more tricky so let's do it here revenue i'm in v8 f2 plus f2 the revenue is going to go up in the credit direction that brings us back in the green down below we're out of balance that's why this one's red we'll go to the work in process v5 f2 plus f2 and the work in process now at the 18 461 is at 6770 so that's where we stand now and so when we when we go into quickbooks we would like to use an invoice because that's the form usually used to record revenue but the other side we don't want going to accounts receivable so if i go back on over and say well how are we going to do that if i go back on over here this is an internal invoice just for just for the revenue recognition part of things invoice and it's going to pull stuff in i don't want to pull in from the estimate this time because that's what i'm doing for the external invoices that i'm going to use and actually send to the client i'm going to pull in the billable items for the internal invoice that i'm going to use which would then calculate the 18 4, 60, 130 of revenue so that looks correct and so what would this do if i recorded it it would record it would increase accounts receivable by the total because it's an invoice and the other side would be going to revenue accounts driven by these line items i want these going to the revenue accounts but i don't want this going to accounts receivable instead i want it to go to work in process account so what I'm going to do is just make this zero by putting a negative number up here with my journal entry and then say this is just going to go to my uh, work in process account work in process. And so I'm just going to put negative 18461130 class number two. And so now nothing's going to accounts receivable because this is zero and the revenue is going to be recorded by these line items and then the part that was going to accounts receivable should now be going to work and process account all right let's save it and close it and see if that is indeed what happens let's go back to the balance sheet back to the balance sheet we're going to say that that uh, work and process is affected here and it's nicely classified by class now so if i had multiple amounts for different jobs and work in process i can break that out and track it as with the billings using the class tracking tab into the right running uh the report over here we've got the revenue now recognized here at that uh at that 18 461 so i've got the revenue matching you know the cost of goods sold using our kind of completed concept matching concept which is which is nice by the way, if I compare this to like the the first job at the end of the month that we did at the end of the month, 070125 to 123125, you can see where the revenue recognition is a mess here because I recognize the revenue over here based on based on just when I build the client and then the expenses when we actually incurred the expenses. So they're not matching, they're not lining up like we would kind of like them to line up from a timing concept on a percentage completion kind of conceptual basis. So I'm going to go 010125063125. Let's run this again. Let me do 06325. There's not 31 days in uh, June. You have to stop at 30. Okay, I could do that. Let's go ahead and bill the client now. So now we're going to now we're going to bill the client based on our billing schedule, not based on the work that was done because we agreed to bill them and we're going to stick to the billing process because we were we go by our word over here. We told you the billing process, we laid it out. That's what we're going to do no matter what happens in our because that's how we set it up. So accounts receivables are going to go up by what we build them for month number five now, according to just our billing schedule that we agreed on at the beginning of this process. And the other side, I don't want to go to revenue because I'm recording the revenue based on this worksheet over here, not based on the billing schedule because this is just for the billing side. 
So I want the accounts receivable to go up, the other side go into billings. All right, let's do that. We're gonna go up top and say AR. Let's go into AR, something's in it. F2 plus F2. Scrolling down, 35,000, up to 35,000. Mui B to the N. Other side not going to revenue, but rather to billings. F2 plus F2. Scrolling down to the billings, 35,000. And that, you'll, you'll note, is now up to 100,000 meaning we have now billed out or invoiced the, the invoices that go actually to the client for the whole 100,000. When I enter the invoice in QuickBooks, however, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of finagling to get that billing item there. And I'd also like to get the detail on the invoice that I'm gonna send to the client, which I'll pull in from the estimate. Let's do it. Go into the first tab. We're gonna add another invoice, ultra invoice. I'm gonna pull this one in from the estimate. And this time I can choose either here or I can, like I can make this 35, but I can just choose the remaining balance now because this is gonna be it. I'm gonna close this thing out. That's the remaining balance in our progress invoicing. Boom. So now it's closed. We have nothing over here to pull over anymore. And this is gonna be as of five, one. Five, one, and then down here, it pulls in nicely to what we wanna give the client. The 35,000 down here, because it's an invoice, will increase accounts receivable. That's what we want. But the other side is gonna to go to these revenue accounts. I don't want it to go to revenue. I want it to go to billings. I could replace all of these items with a line item for billings, but I kinda of like the detail that's being pulled in from the estimate and therefore, I'm just going to do a, a little journal entry at the bottom here. And I'm just going to say I'm going to reduce the revenue account that these are going into. And just by the whole amount, negative 35,000. And this will be class number two. And I'm just going to put it into my billings account. And notice, notice these billings account isn't actually the account. This is, there is a billings account, but these are the items that I set up which are going to the revenue account. This is going to a revenue account, reducing the revenue account. These are all going to revenue accounts. So this will cancel out all this, and then we'll put it into the billings account with this one of 35,000 class number two. So now what's this going to do? It's an invoice. That number is going to increase the accounts receivable. That's, uh, uh, hold on a second. That number is going to increase the no, I'm right. Why are you second guessing yourself? Yeah, I'm right. That increases the accounts receivable. And then the other side would be going to revenue, which is gonna go up with these items, but then back down with that item. So it nets itself out. And then it's gonna go into the billing account, which is where we actually want it to go. This allows us to give the detail of the invoice to the client, which is the, you know, a nice form for them to be able to uh, finish the payment, actually pay us on and uh, it allows us to record, you know, the way we want to record it here. So we're going to say, okay, save it and close it. Let's check it out. And we're going to go running, run it. Jenny, I was running and 35,000 up on the accounts receivable. And the other side's going into the billings account, which is broken out by class, which is nice. Uh, and it's now at the 100,000 on the billings account which once again means that we've completely, you know, build out this job because it was at 100,000. Now note that if I had multiple jobs up top, it would be hard for me to see that that matches out to the total of the job uh, because it's a balance sheet account. But the fact that we have this classes allows us to kind of break it out. And so that's kind of nice. If we didn't have the classes, I could go into it and I could sort it by customer. And that would also be a way that we can basically see it and if there were multiple customers, but remember you want to have customer names in here. That's another reason why using the invoice form instead of a journal entry is quite, uh, it, it could be helpful. So, I, so I'd like to avoid the journal entries as much as possible because these other forms allow us to do the, to do the job costing the project stuff, and then the, and then, uh, have the names that will be applicable and also be able to track things more easily on this project side of things as well as in the actual customers which are under sales and tracking customer number uh, two 
and tracking all the detail of, of the transactions that are happening here. If these were all just journal entries, then you know we, we wouldn't be able to see all the detail quite as nicely this way either. Okay, so let's go back. Let's just check our numbers then, if I may. Uh, 18,254, so 18,254, 35,000, 37 seven zero sixty yeah sixty that's right it's off that's right one hundred thousand and then fourteen twenty three uh one hundred thousand fourteen twenty four rounding difference income statement side of things if we go to the income statement is at sixty seven sixty nine and uh and uh forty six seven forty six Six, and, and then 14.24 on the total. All right, move B to the end. So then if I then right click on this and duplicate this at this point in time, we are, uh, I can check this out instead of by month, by class. And so now we've got that nice class report. If I bring this to the end of the year, 123125, I can see the two classes that we have now. This is a great report because again, if I didn't record something to a class and everything in income accounts and the cost of goods sold should be recorded to a class, then I'll have the non-class category pop up here. So being able to see a whole report that gives it class by class and total uh, can be a, a useful tool to kind of double check everything that's going on. And we can do that with the project reports as well, but the project report in total is not quite as detailed so let's just check that out reports on the left and go to the project report project summary and go from 0101251213125 and run it running and so you can see it's you know income cost profit and loss so there we have that we can also see things by project so if i go into by project and we can see the information by project this way and we can go into basically project number two and see, in essence, the income statement summary for project number two and more reports within here specifically for project number two. But it's useful to see all the projects in this way sometimes or in a profit and loss format. And the projects tool doesn't generally give us these balance sheet account breakouts, which can be quite nice if we're trying to track the billings account by job. So, so that's why I think the classes in conjunction or possibly even tags, but, but the classes I think break out on the balance sheet where the tags don't gives us that breakout on the balance sheet. Okay. So we're going to wrap this. We're going to, we're going to try to get close to wrapping this up next time. We're going to receive uh, the cash payment and record the cost of goods sold and revenue next time. And that will bring the work in process up to around 100,000. And then we can basically kind of close the job out after that. So that's what you that's what you have to look forward to. And I know it's exciting and you're on the edge of the seat. So uh, we'll be back to do that soon.